So I'm talk a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, UCANs and how we use them in NFT dot storage and soon in Web three dot storage to to do uh, authentication. So first, this all came up because we had we had a, a, an issue, a problem with the with the service, and this came specifically from our users. Uh, we when we built the service we like our api and the authentication of the api was a basically a really basic type of system with only api keys uh, and those api keys cannot really live in a web browser or any unsecure type of um, device or um, computer um, so this was a request from our users we, they wanted to to have an easier way for them to kind of allow the, um, their users, if we're talking about a marketplace being the user of NFT storage, they wanted to allow their users to um, upload directly to us. Uh, because if, the, if, if we don't allow for this, they actually need to proxy everything uh, through their own services, through their own infrastructure. So it, we are basically duplicating the bandwidth they, create, they need to create uh, extra services and proxies for all of the traffic they, they, they need from the end users they have. Uh, so yeah, just a, a small uh, diagram uh, about to explain this. So um, the, the marketplace needs to request an, an API key from us. And that's how, how they interact with our API. We send them the, the API key and they, they need to keep it secret. They need to save it in a, a, a one password or whatever, or in whatever way they want in their backend. But it needs to be secure. It needs to be on a backend type of service where can, they can provide the security they need. Um, and then if the user needs to upload something, they need to go through the, the marketplace backend and then the marketplace backend needs to send the data to us. Um, so this is a, a little bit uh, web two, uh, and we wanted something better. So the solution um, that we are implementing is uh, UCANS. UCANS is a, um, a, so it's basically user controlled authorization network, and the, the, the spec for this was made by uh, Fission. Um, and we, we actually contributed a bit to the, to the spec and we are collaborating on, on the whole UCAN ecosystem a lot right now. So these UCANs are a trustlessly secure local first user originator authorization and re revocation scheme. Uh, the users achieve the, this public ver uh, verifiability with chain certificates and that uh, decentralized uh, identifiers or DIDs. And we can actually uh, have a, a verifiable chain compression uh, using content addressing and CIDs directly. I will explain a little bit better later how this can be done. Um, and specifically for us, um, we issue our UCANs to, to our users and they basically contain the permissions uh, and the chain of, of proofs uh, that they need um, to do a, an upload request. And the thing, the, the cool thing about this is uh, UCANs can be delegated. So uh, if we issue what, what we call a root UCAN from our service uh, to a marketplace, they can use that UCAN and delegate from that uh, another one with uh, a smaller set of permissions or um, with an expiration date. Um, uh, and they can create a new UCAN uh, and that one they can give to, uh, to their users directly so they can upload directly to us and they can, they can own that UCAN. They, they can, can even generate more UCANs for themselves if they have uh, multiple devices and they can keep whatever um, permissions the, the marketplace gave, uh, gave them. Um, so it's a little bit more decentralized and the users are more in control, either being the user of the marketplace or being the user, the, the uh, an end user uh, going to a website and trying to, to upload a file to meet an, an NFT. Uh, so uh, in this slide, I'm going a little bit deeper on this. So um, to explain how the, the whole flow, uh, how the, the whole flow works, you can see in the, in the diagram on the right, 
Uh, if we start from the service, um, that we need to know like the first actor. Uh, and this is like uh, to talk. We need to know the marketplace. The service needs to know the marketplace. So the marketplace needs to give us at least there the ID. We don't need private keys. We don't need nothing. We just need the public key or the ID from, from them. Uh, and with that, we sign one you can token for them, specifically for them, because they just gave us the, their DID. So we issue and sign a you can to them. Uh, and we give them uh, full capabilities because they, 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 they actually have an account with us. They are like the root user of a uh, you can chain of responsibilities. Um, so we issue a, a, what we call a root you can with all the capabilities normally. Uh, or at least for now, we, we issue them with a, a, an expiration date of two weeks, uh, but they can basically refresh this token whenever they want and keep, keep it uh, fresh and active. Uh, with, you can see an example on the, on the left uh, to see how the, this first you can uh, looks like. Um, so then the marketplace, um, then this route you can, uh, actually, uh, they, they actually need to, to keep it safe because it's the route you can, it's, it has all the capabilities. They cannot just share this one and they shouldn't, that's not how you can works and it will fail validations afterwards. They should not uh, share this, um, you can with anyone. What they, what they can do is, is to sign a new you can for their end users, as you can see in the diagram here. Uh, so uh, the, the end user needs, to, in the same way, needs to provide the ID to the marketplace, just that no need to exchange files, nothing, just the ID. And that can, can, can live inside the marketplace own authentication flow in their login, their accounts. Um, so it should be seamless for any marketplace to implement. And what, what they do is that they sign a new you can um, for this user. And they, they, they put uh, in the property called the uh, PRF, which is basically proofs, the first you can, the one they, they, uh, we gave them. And this, with this, we kind of, we kind of building up a chain of proofs. As you can see in the in the in the diagram, you have this signing sign you can for the marketplace, sign you can for Alice, and sign you can for service. So this is basically our chain. Um, and here they can build up a, a little loop because they don't want to give uh, tokens that uh, don't expire because maybe they are giving them to be used inside the browser or any insecure type of uh, environment. Uh, and they actually can only can issue um, not only short-lived UCANs, but they can also issue uh, a UCAN with uh, a subset of, of uh, capabilities. So on the first UCAN, we actually uh, give the marketplace all the capabilities, but the marketplace can reduce that for their end users and, and just allow them to do an upload. And that's it. They can even restrict um, which upload they, they allow them to do. If they, the, the end user sends them a multi-ash or some kind of ash, they can also include that in the UCAN and then when the upload uh, arrives at, uh, in NFTL storage, we can even validate that. So there's a, a lot of uh, constraints and features that we can encode in this system and this, in this flow. Uh, and uh, at the end, the end user needs to sign a new UCAN. And this is really important uh, the la because uh, even when we were researching all of this, uh, it's um, me, me included this last step, I, I, uh, it took me a while to understand why this is so important. Um, every actor in this flow needs to sign uh, a Yukon. There's no, there's no like reusing something I just got and just send that. That cannot happen. Every actor needs to get something from another actor, even if it's uh, themselves like issuing to another device and need to sign again. So in this way, we actually build uh, the, the complete uh, chain until we end up uh, where we want to upload something. And that's the, the last one. 
this last one in the diagram where it says sign you can for the ID service. Um, and in this you can, you, you, we actually put the audience of this you can is nft.storage. So they need to put our DID there and our DID is, basic, is public. They can just get, get it from our API or website without any authorization or anything. It's completely public. It's our public key. Uh, and the others needs to be us. So if it's not, we will not validate it. But building all of this, at the end, the user can just sign a new can with us as the audience. They need to tell us, OK, uh, I want to do an upload. So the only capability in this you can is the upload slash import. They need to include the proof. And the proof is the, the you can they got from the marketplace, and they can upload directly to us. Uh, this way, we we kind of we allow for all the actors in the in the our ecosystem to actually uh, handle all the authentication in um, when, in many ways. And you can also see this like when I'm talking about proofs. This, this chain doesn't need to be a, like a list. It can be a, a, actually a DAG or, or, or a tree. We can include proofs, more than one proof in, in, a, in a UCAN token. So we can even merge like UCANs from NFT.storage or Web3.storage and uh, the marketplace can put both as proofs on a UCAN they are issuing to, to their users. Uh, and then their users can decide, oh, I want to upload to Web3.storage or I want to upload to NXL storage, and they have that capability just with one token. They don't need to go, come, come to us to create an account. They don't need to, to go to the marketplace to ask for another token specific for this service. Um, and this is basically uh, the, the, the big feature of UCANs, uh, is that we can uh, merge a bunch of capabilities from a bunch of actors. Uh, and just delegate delegate them as much as we want, uh, and also being able to constrain them as much as we want to reduce the, the either the, the expiration date or the capabilities that we delegate. Um, and all of this is easily encoded. Um, and one example, this is a very simple example, this is the one that we, act, uh, we actually have implemented and it, it was the one that we actually wanted to solve because this was a request from our users, but this can be a, a lot more complex than, than this and be a lot more powerful. Um, it's actually uh, really, really awesome. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Here you have some resources. There's uh, the first one is our, uh, library that implements our, cap our cap the capability specific for nft.storage. Uh, it also, also implements a little bit of the validation we do in the, um, in the service, in the API itself. And the other ones, the spec, some sites from, from Vision, where you can find all the information about UCANs and how they work uh, and all the capabilities they, and they allow.